Sports presentation. Week five in the NFL. Pull up the easy chair and get out the snack tray. Since we're taking prisoners, they eat when we tell them to. <laughs> the NFL on Fox. The Vikes hope to be giant killers today in Jersey. Minnesota's 4-0 thanks to the locksmith. But it's the fourth quarter where the Purple Boys make you pay. Meanwhile, the Giants are on a roll. Because even just one, more fun than none. Today in Tampa Town, the Lions will try to tangle up the helpless bucks. If Mitchell airs it, Morton snares it. While Barry keeps roaring. It's an animal house as the Panthers and Jags party hardy. Caroline is ready to play with the big boys, and Lamar is showing he's all the business, while Jacksonville's got the league's top gun in yards. The Saints and Ravens battle in Baltimore. For New Orleans, Haywood and Haynes are happening and hot. Baltimore needs Vinny T to rave on. The Rams and Cards rumble in the desert. In St. Louis, they're banking on Tony to set Brucey loose. But Arizona says LaShawn will rush on and on. The Cheese Boys look to get back on track against the Seahawks. If Brett can find his man, Brooks will find the stands. And the Packers' D looks to commission Commander Warren out to sea. The Falcons fly west to take on the Niners. George will be perched on the bench while the Niners resurrect Elvis, baby, cure their blues. So Jailhouse Jerry can rock the end zone. Now. Live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. Four guys with no sunglasses, but plenty of talent anyway. It's the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Week number five in the NFL, and it's time to start believing anything is possible. A second-year expansion team is undefeated and atop its division. The defending Super Bowl champs are reeling and at the bottom of their division, and a 39-year-old quarterback and his team are 4-0. Folks, it's all true, and it's all coming your way right here on Fox. And hello, everyone. I'm James Brown, welcoming you to another edition of Fox NFL Sunday. We thank you for sharing your day with us, along with my colleagues, Terry, Howie, and Ronnie. Hey, you were 3-0 and last week. Ronnie was 1-1. One and one, But no one had a week as good as Big Boy here on set in Vancouver. Yeah, they had me swinging in on a crane, parachuting into the trees, <laughs> rode a motorcycle across a log, knocked a guy with an axe handle, kicked another guy, and rescued the girl. <laughs> Well, <laughs> what a great life you have. We, we don't do movies. We, picture, have, we, we have to work for a living, Jealousy don't we, Ron? It's ugly head once again. As much as he loves you, he had the nerve to ask you, did you have any lines this week? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Yo, hit him. Here's a look at what's happening around the National Football no League. Dialogue. And what's happening is the suspension of Atlanta Falcons starting quarterback, Jeff George. Now, as most of you know, this argument on the sidelines last week went on for at least six minutes, and it was the catalyst for George's suspension. Now, the argument stemmed from George being pulled from the game after throwing an interception on a deflected pass. Did he apologize? Um... I really don't want to comment on that <laughs> right now. You know, I'm trying to find out what you're feeling. <laughs> you know, either, you know. I'm hurt. Yeah, I know I'm you're hurt. hurt. The, I know the hardest hurt. thing for me to take is that I won't be playing on Sundays. Have you ever sat down, Jeff, and looked in a mirror and said, there's a pattern here to my life that I'm responsible for, and it's, on a, and it's a negative pattern? I see myself as a winner. You know, I, I never look at myself in, in the mirror and say, what if I did this? Coach, do you feel like you're going to be fired because of all of this? No, you know, if I do, you know, one thing about me, uh, I don't worry about those things. I mean, I really don't worry about that. I do my job. Uh, I, I'm honest with the players. I know when I lose the players, then it's time for me to move on. I will do whatever it takes to get on a, a team and play football on Sundays again. That's all I want. We went to the playoffs last year. We are, uh, uh, got a lot of good things going on, and we're doing a lot of the right things here for the first time. And those things will pay off as we survive this adverse situation. And Jeff George is not going to be a part of it. I would say right now, it doesn't look like he will. Well, I was there. I sat down with both of them. Two things are real clear. Number one, Jeff George truly is hurt. June Jones truly is hurt. Jeff George feels as he has been betrayed by his head coach, thinking that management or the ownership has demanded Bobby Bear to play. The point is, why the outburst for five to six minutes? It's because when you have 
felt a friend has betrayed you, the pain is much greater than just a quarterback head coach controversy. Folks, time now for our Fox Watch. And for that, we begin at the Meadowlands. The Minnesota Vikings looking to extend their perfect record today against the New York Giants. Our own Dick Stockton will be calling the action from the Meadowlands, and he's with us now. Good morning, Dick. And good morning to you, JB. The Vikings with the best record in the NFC. No one figured this, and when you look at their defensive unit, Tony Dungy, the coordinator, gone to Tampa Bay. They lost Ed McDaniel, their outstanding linebacker, yet the defense has been one of the big reasons they're 4-0. Yes, a big play defense, including seven sacks against Packer quarterback Brett Favre last week. What does that mean for the Giants? Well, Giant coach Dan Reeves said yesterday there'll be more pressure on the beleaguered and struggling quarterback Dave Brown today than at any point since he's been here because he'll be forced to call audibles at the line of scrimmage something the Giants have not done up to this point as far as the weather is concerned the Giants were hoping for wet weather like they had in beating the Jets last week they're not going to get their wish it's dry and the fields in excellent condition that's the story here right now let's send you down to Jacksonville and Kenny Allen Thanks, Dick. 108 degrees on the field for the first ever regular season meeting between the NFL's expansion cousins of a year ago. Now, the Panthers have already had the upper hand on the Jaguars three times, dating back to October of 1993, when Carolina was awarded their franchise 35 days before Jacksonville. The Panthers then won the coin flip for the number one pick in the 1995 draft, and they defeated the Jaguars in the Hall of Fame game last year, 20 to 14. Now, starting at quarterback once again for Carolina will be the former Jacksonville Jaguar, Steve Berline. In relief of the injured Kerry Collins, Berline started six games for the Jacksonville Jaguars a year ago. Let's keep it now in the state of Florida and head southwest to Tampa and Sam Rosen. Thanks, Kenny. Uh, three weeks ago, these two teams met in Pontiac, Michigan, and the Lions beat the Bucks 21 to 6. But right now, the Lions are in a bit of disarray. On Friday, they signed their second first-round draft pick, Jeff Hardings, which means they had to free up some room under the salary cap, so they cut their starting middle linebacker, Michael Brooks. That means Pepper Johnson, who hasn't played all that much, will get the start this afternoon. More injury problems for the Lions on the outside. Antonio London is inactive. He's got a shoulder injury. So Tom Beer, who used to be a fullback, will get his first NFL start. Talk about injuries. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who have yet to win a game this season, have a lot of them. They're missing their starting left tackle and left guard. They've had to rebuild the left side of their offensive line. There's an interconference matchup going on in Baltimore. For that, let's go to Mike Breen. Sam, the return of the NFL to the city of Baltimore continues. Ravens with their second home game of the season, hosting the New Orleans Saints, a team desperate for a win. And it's not going to be easy. Saints are all banged up, missing four key players. Two on defense, Ronaldo Turnbull and Rufus Porter. Ray Zeller's on offense, and then J.J. McCleskey, one of the better special teamers in the NFL, he's also out. As for the Ravens, coming off a bye week a bit healthier, but still some problems on the right side of the defense. Anthony Pleasant is out. Mike Frederick will take his place. Linebacker Mike Caldwell also will not play. Gerald Williams takes his place. And at right cornerback, Donnie Brady, his first NFL start for Isaac Booth, who's been struggling. You can count on the Saints going to that side throughout the game. Now let's go back to James Brown. All right, Mike, doubleheader Sunday here. Most of you later on will see Atlanta at San Francisco. Green Bay will take on Seattle. Tony Banks will lead the Rams against Arizona. That will be coming later today. Eight teams have gone to backup quarterbacks as of today. Four of them will be in our later games. One starter, Steve Young, feels he can play, wants to play, but is Gerbach getting the call? Why? I think why is because we're starting another divorce. We talked about a divorce earlier. Now we have one with Steve Young. He's going back out there, trying to get back out there to play this week. They won't let him play. The problem that they have there is now Bill Walsh steps in. He wants to try to change the offense. Another thing that they got going on is Harris Barton is sore. They have Brent Jones out. They're having problems there. 